All right, YouTube, there's a link in the description to one of the now over 100 articles on the topic of Yellowstone's roads. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, in recent days, uh, I, a hot spot, a thermal underneath one of Yellowstone's roads actually caused it to melt. Uh, and they're telling everyone to stay far away from this area because I guess their worry is not so much about the road. I mean, you know, the tar is bubbling and sizzling and melting and, and falling apart in this region, but they're more worried about somebody hiking in the area uh, and potentially stepping on what looks like solid ground, but ending up underneath it in a pit of boiling water. Uh, I can think of very few things more, more scary than the idea that you would simply be taking a nice walk through the woods uh, in Yellowstone or wherever, and all of a sudden, you know, you just sink into the ground and boil to death. Uh, and you get, you know, the flesh drips off your bones because your fat's being rendered uh, into a liquid. Uh, it's, it's, it's scary to think about such things. Um, I think the greater concern, though, with this story is, uh, okay, what's, uh, what's causing that they, even they admit that this is unusual. They say, well, you know, steaming potholes and stuff like that are normal, uh, but this is, you know, abnormal, it's caused this much damage, and I think it was Tom Lupshu and several others uh, that keep up to date with Yellowstone stuff more than I do, uh, pointed out that they believe that this picture actually isn't the real picture of the road and that they, it's actually sort of a stock image uh, of a road from Yellowstone that was damaged previously and that this is probably far worse. Um, the things that are going on at Yellowstone again though, which I pointed out in a previous video uh, because the data set's just not long enough, it's not, you're not capable of telling whether this sort of activity that you see at Yellowstone is par for the course, if it's completely normal, uh, or if it's elevated, which I think most people lean towards believing, or if it could be lower than normal. Uh, it could be that the data set that you're seeing uh, on that one graph <clears throat> that I also posted, that by the way still hasn't been updated since April, I wonder why. Uh, because the line kept going up and up and up, maybe they were worried people would put two and two together. Um, uh, if, if you look at this data, it simply doesn't go back far enough. We're talking about a, a geological scale of time for eruptions and, and other events in Yellowstone that for even the smaller events, you know, steam explosions, you're looking at tens of thousands of years. For the major events, the ones that, you know, have knocked back mankind in the past, supposedly, like the Toba event, you're looking at a scale of hundreds of thousands of years. And they're giving you this chart that goes back to 1984. Sorry, but that's just not going to cut it. Anyone who studied even basic statistics knows this. Uh, the, the, you can't make any reasonable uh, conclusions about the seismic activity at the site with such a short graph. Even the downloadable reports don't go much further than the mid-80s. They weren't even monitoring with most of their equipment until the mid-1960s. Uh, it's, it's a fool's errand to try to derive any conclusions about whether the amount of seismic activity at Yellowstone currently is normal. What we do know is the caldera is larger than they previously thought, which they tried to spin and, and say, well, that actually means it's less uh, likely to erupt. I don't see how. Um, I, I find myself at a loss to uh, understand their conclusion, I guess. Uh, I, I would think that if there's more lava in this region, it would potentially be a greater concern. Uh, apparently not. <clears throat> and then they've tried to say, well, it's never going to erupt again. It's actually dying. I think most of us understand that's not the case. Uh, the, the lava, the magma chamber itself is not very far from the soil level. It's still in the relatively impermeable layer, but it's not far from breaking through that layer. I think the, the concern might be that as soon as it does uh, crack that layer, that's when the explosion happens. Uh, could happen 50,000 years from now. There's no way to tell. Uh, but when things start melting randomly at the park, you had an article a few weeks ago from India, uh, the, the one active volcanic region in the whole nation is reheating and they talked about there were uh, tele not telephone poles but street lamps and metal street lamps uh, had been had started to glow red hot around the base uh, because they were absorbing all this thermal energy uh, geysers you know puffs of steam were coming up there was the smell of brimstone 
And people are worried, rightfully so, because they see these things, they haven't seen them before, and they're worried about an eruption or that the area will become seismically unstable. If you apply sort of the same logic, which, which even you know, these groups like the USGS would say, I guess, is valid, a valid concern for this region in India, uh, to Yellowstone, and you, you look at the data that's being given and you say, yes, earthquakes have increased you know, tenfold or something like that. Uh, the heat is increasing in some of these geysers. You've got geysers that haven't gone off in an extended period of time, suddenly shooting steam out regularly. And I think the worry is that just simply observing what's happening at the park, not even taking necessarily scientific measurements, but just looking at the surface features on this park and noticing how different they are supposedly from even a few years ago, uh, as people who have been to the park before have themselves attested to, I think the worry is that it's indicative of that an event is coming. Now, as I said, the, the thing that people should be hoping for is that any event at Yellowstone involves simply a steam explosion. You know, there's a pocket of superheated gas and water uh, near the surface already that has been smoldering there and boiling away for some time that suddenly explodes. It would rip a huge crater in the park uh, it would probably kill most of the tourists there, but it wouldn't be a world-changing scenario. Ultimately, the blast would be contained within the proximity of the park. Uh, whereas if the caldera itself cracks through this impermeable layer, this relatively impermeable layer, and surfaces, uh, you could see, number one, what if it doesn't explode? What if something happens differently this time? And lava just comes shooting out, and you end up with a 10,000-foot-tall volcanic cone in the middle of Yellowstone National Park. At the very least, you've lost all your tourist revenue, because nobody's going to want to get near something that volatile. Then, what if it does explode? That's, I would say, far worse, because, of course, the blast zone alone encompasses something like some insane number, like 20 miles in every direction is vaporized within seconds. Uh, <laughs> within, within the edge of the caldera, basically everything's completely gone almost in an instant. Uh, everything for hundreds of miles around that is doomed to die uh, very quickly. They will be you know, burned in hot ash, and people a thousand miles away might be choking on this uh, ash fall. I think it's a, something that people should be rightfully concerned about, is the possibility that it goes off. Screw global warming and nuclear proliferation. You could draw all the nukes in the world could fly right now. And ultimately, there'd probably be more survivors than if Yellowstone were to suddenly collapse and explode out in a shower of hot ash. Uh, nature is far more, I mean, the fact that the two are even comparable in scope uh, shows the, the sheer raw power of nature. It takes it hundreds of thousands of years to charge up all this energy and then it's just released in an instant. And it's happened before and it will eventually happen again. So when I see that roads are melting at Yellowstone, and I see that the USGS says, don't worry, it's normal for this to happen, then I go back searching through the news, and I try to find another example where there's some local news article or something mentioning, yeah, the roads damaged at Yellowstone because it melted. We're sorry, you'll have to go around the other way. I'm failing to find anything. Now, maybe some of you are more skilled at looking up news archives. Do this for me. If you know about any super secret journalistic sites or whatever that archive like every piece of news that's posted online, can you go back for the last 10 years and try to find a single article in that time period that talks about a single road at Yellowstone melting away uh, and them keeping people away from it? I know the steaming potholes are, are supposedly normal, I can accept that. Uh, but what about an entire road with a, you know, a thermal pocket that extends beyond the road in both directions? Uh, where everything's sort of, you know, a foot below the surface. It's just boiling water and it only looks solid. Because I'm failing to find anything on it. Uh, and if it could be corroborated that, yes, it's happened before, I wouldn't be concerned, uh, because then it would be fairly normal. Strange, uh, freakish and scary, but at least normal. Uh, I think the worry is that it's not, and that they're just sort of hoping that people don't search too much and, and find out that that's the case. Mm. I love Red Bull. If Yellowstone does go off, I'm buying a four-pack of Red Bull and I'm just going to chug them and have a heart attack because, you know, at least I'll die happy. Um, that's about all. So please, if, if you're skilled at, at such things, looking up news archives, 
can you link me and message me or whatever an article that says something similar to this from the past uh, it, you know from like 2000 on through because otherwise I'm going to assume that this is not normal I think that would be newsworthy road melts because of thermal pocket high danger that hitchhiker will be boiled alive I think that's newsworthy I think most people would agree I think that on a slow news day they might run the story uh, we're seeing over a hundred articles on it now so I don't understand why I'm not able to find any previous mention of something like this happening obviously they think it's interesting so why are there no articles on it if it's supposedly a fairly common event I'm finding nothing maybe you can help me and prove me wrong uh, and I really hope that one of you can because it's just freakish beyond belief that's about all peace out